Welcome to Rodom, welcome to Steel Fest 2023. This time we have a band from faraway lands. Guys, let's start introducing who are you and why are you here sitting on the bench with me? Uh, I'm Mitch from Austere and um, we're here at Steel Fest in Finland. What's your role in the band? I play guitar and vocals. All right, what about you, sir? I'm Tim, I do drums and vocals. And who does the lyrics? Both of us. Both of us. <laughs> so let's start with the lyrics. Like, I'm gonna ask you both, okay? okay. What are your lyrics all about? Uh, pretty introspective stuff. I mean, personal experience or, you know, could be something from a story or something that is deep within in ourselves and we just want to expand on that. How would you expand on this? Yeah, so, so yeah, they're all introspective and personal and to, to people who read them or whatever, they might not necessarily make sense. But I think it's good because people can take what they want from it and maybe relate those things to their own personal experiences, even if it's not necessarily what I meant when I wrote them. And my lyrics tend to be pretty fucking weird anyway. So Is it, is it all about us humor? <laughs> like we're down under, we don't go with the European style. <laughs> no, I think it's, I don't know, I just, I write what I write and half the time I read it back and I'm like, fuck, what was I thinking? But anyway, it is what it is, so. Now, being a fan of Australian uh, flora and fauna, I fucking love that you have those crazy animals and shit. Yeah. and uh, the most poisonous snakes and spiders and all that shit which makes me scared not want to go there um how much australia or the scenery or the people or the culture how much it affects the music you write oh look for me i don't think it i mean obviously growing up there yeah it's it's shaped me into the the person i am today and stuff but i don't think it necessarily uh has any kind of effect on the music I write because it all comes from within. So it sort of doesn't matter where I am, whether, I, you know, if I wrote a song in Finland tomorrow, it would still sound the same as anything I'd write in Australia. So in in a way, yeah, Australia's a beautiful country and stuff, and, and that does give inspiration. But when I write music, I look inward only sort of thing. It's not, I'm not inspired by, you know, the mountains of Norway or the, the desert of Australia yeah, or whatever. It's, it's like, like hard to get into the few roots and mountains yeah. where it's like a rather flat in a way. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Now, Australia is mostly, I think, for a lot of us in the extreme metal scene, be it death metal, trash metal, uh, black metal, it's mostly known, I guess, for more aggressive bands, bands that uh, kind of flirt with a lot of trashier parts and heavy metal. and. Well, not that might much like a kind of a melancholic music, which you kind of definitely put into with the melodies and all that stuff. Why don't you sound that Australian, if you will? Well, <clears throat> I've played in bands that are like that, but for the most part, with it austere for me, uh, I want to write something that's a bit more in depth and personal and reflective of how I feel at a, a specific time. So I decided to take a step away from doing the more black death rash sort of sound, which I still enjoy today. But Austere is a bit more introspective, a bit more inward, and it allows me to sort of put more of myself into the lyrics and the riffs and the song structures and things. And I just, I'm very lucky to have somebody like Tim, who I've known for many years, that understands that. So we found a good balance, a good harmony to be able to do that sort of thing. So do you find a difference uh, I mean, obviously you do, but what kind of difference you, uh, you you see as an artist when playing with more aggressive style than, than for example, Austria? What what sort of difference do I find? Like, like I said, as an artist playing the music with different moods and all. Yeah, I mean, I, I find I need to be in a, in a certain type of mood to be able to write music like this. I can't just come home from work and just start playing guitar, you know, or or go to a gig and just start you know, playing that sort of aggressive stuff, I need to be in a certain type of mood. But um, I don't know, I mean, I'm pretty in tune and in touch with myself, so I can sort of differentiate between when I'm feeling aggressive and, and want to play fast stuff or when I want to play something that's a bit more atmospheric or be it melancholic or, you know, that sort of thing. I'm able to say, yes, I can do it now or no, I can't do it now. Now, when people define genres, sometimes they just pick up like 
for example, talking about databases like metal archives and stuff, they're like, okay, these guys are so melancholic, I'm gonna box them into some kind of a suicidal, depressive yeah. black metal and all that stuff. And people want to go with these genres as like they're easy to define. But you don't seem like you're doing that kind of a exactly depressive stuff, while the music might be kind of a indicating towards a direction. Yeah. So if I get to like ask you, how would you define your music yourself? Oh, look, yeah, I've never thought of us as like DSBM. Yep. Even back, you know, the first time we did Austere, it, I mean, yeah, the lyrics are depressive and whatever because we were depressed guys back then. I'm, um, but we never you sung about suicide and about, we never like, you know, encouraged people to kill themselves or anything like that. So for me, it's just, I'm not speaking for Mitch here, just for me, it's just like melodic black metal. It's that's the stuff I grew up listening to. That's, you know, if I'm playing black metal, I want it to be melodic and atmospheric more so, you know, I don't care if a riff is depressive or whatever. If it's a good riff, then it's a good it, riff. It matters it. more that it sounds like something that you exactly like yeah 100 percent behind it exactly yeah it's it's not yeah it's we're not trying to i don't think we try to ever really oh let's write a really sad fucking thing like or whatever it's it's i mean it just naturally comes out that way but if if it's a melodic atmospheric it has a good you know melody and hook then that's that's enough it's it's not we don't sit there and go oh let's try and make this a bit sadder or anything like that <laughs> it would be kind of a pretentious yeah exactly no, if, I, if I could just say something on that too, no. personally, I have no interest in genres. Like, I mean, it doesn't Not matter. Not even, even in a library. <laughs> yeah, library's a bit different, but I just mean, <laughs> I just mean, for example, I don't, like, I mean, I would consider our music just black metal. I, I, I don't know anything about DSBM or uh, black gays or post black metal. Like, I, I just don't come from, from that world. Like, I just write what I want to write because it reflects how I feel at the time. And if people want to put a label on it, that's fine, but I just feel really disconnected from that. I'm just not, I just don't share anything with, with putting a label on it. That's a pretty interesting and I kind of agree. I mean, as a review guy, I kind of have to work with all those genres and boxings and, you know, defining things because it just makes people easier to do it sure. but at the same time i totally understand where you're coming from like uh it's kind of a pretentious like where you draw the line like okay this is more black metal this is more suicidal what, what the fuck and, yeah and lyrics sometimes overlap way too much and suddenly all those genres kind of uh but the definitions lose the kind of uh sense in a way i mean back when we were in our early 20s i mean we're we're, we're 40 now you know but back hey, in, not yet well near <laughs> enough but i mean that stuff didn't exist then. It was all black metal and it was all death metal and it was just extreme music and for extreme personalities, which I think we had back then. And the music we were playing then, it's still a pretty good mirror or representation of how we felt and how we inside as to how we feel now. I mean, nothing has changed. We still do things the exact same way as we did back then. So Maybe that, just a little bit more mature because we're a little uh, bit older. Well, that was exactly what I was going to ask. Like, like, because I've done music myself from from the '90s and all this stuff, and I noticed that there's a difference. Like, going towards being 50 years old versus what I was like as a 19 years old. And uh, I want to ask you, how have you uh, seen age or maturity? like uh, affecting how you do lyrics or music like how much how much things have changed i just take a little bit more time with when i'm creating now whereas things in my early 20s i was got to be done quick yep. because it's just what you're young you're carefree and all that sort of thing but more spontaneous yes. impulsive yeah but that spontaneity still exists now it's just i can reel it back in when i know i'm going too far Whereas back in my twenties, I'd probably just run with it, you know. Well, like, uh, let's do the fight and worry about yes, later. Yes, exactly. Okay. Yeah. How now, now I'll pick up a shield and a sword as opposed to yeah. 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 How is the scene nowadays? Um, the Australians. I know it's a big landmass, and I know that it, we really can't talk about different cities in, in terms of like geographical. Uh, what do you have? Well, well, distances and cultures, subcultures in the various. 
CDs and all, but how do you see as a whole, if you can, Australian scene nowadays versus what it used to be? It's actually kind of funny you ask that because it's it's done a full 360 degrees. So a lot of the old bands that you know, Bestie Wall, Us, or I mean maybe not them, but Crypt, Bremelin, and all these old bands that Australia are known for have actually just come back and started playing live again, which I personally think is great because I grew up listening to those bands and they went away for a long time. Yep. But um, in terms of international exposure, it's next to none. I mean, it's very hard for an Australian band to get noticed outside of Australia, and it always has been, just because of the geographical distance of exactly. uh, record labels. They're not willing to take a chance on bands that are so far away and they can't play into a Europe, and it's, it's really, really difficult. And we're very fortunate to have the support of a international or European label. Well, well I, I've got to be honest. One of the reasons why I wanted you to interview specifically was because it's not like we get Australian bands here coming like every week and I was like, if I'm gonna miss this opportunity, who knows how many years it will take. Now, talking of that, how much different it is for you guys playing in Australia or say Europe, Asia, wherever? Well, look, as austere, we've, this is only our third gig ever. Third? Yeah. Okay. So. We, we never played live the first time around and then we never really planned to. I think we might have done some rehearsals once or twice, like 15 years ago, but... So our first gig was last year, we did two, and then, yeah, this is our third, so... I mean, we've obviously both played in other bands all yep. over the place, yep. but um, I think, as far as Ostia goes, yeah, I, I kind of can't imagine playing in Australia because... I just don't think people really know us there. Like, I think we're probably known for other bands more than Austere in Australia. Whereas in Europe and, I don't know, maybe Asia, maybe not, but um, we're obviously more known for this than our other bands. So it's kind of a weird one, yeah. Let's do a little bit name dropping now because this is kind yeah. of a, like sparking my drizzle. So I know a lot of things could be read on like metal archives and blah, but now it's your time to little give a lot more love for the other bands as well. Which bands you consider the important ones besides us here? Oh, so obviously my solo project Germ, um, which is also signed to Prophecy Productions. I've been working with them for like 10 years. But um, that, although I'm really terrible with releasing anything, I think the last album's about seven years ago or something now. But um, then I have a couple of other things. Autumn Storm's one, we kind of do whatever we want, whenever we want. Um, and then in the past, I mean, I've, I've played in, I used to play in power metal bands back when I was a teenager. Name dropping, name dropping. Okay, yeah, all right then. Keep so there was, there was a band called Dungeon and we actually toured Europe with Megadeth back nice. in 2005. Um, that was a pretty good experience. That was my first time touring overseas. And it was obviously totally different to this, you know, we we're playing like 5,000 seat arenas and stuff. But um, yeah, that was great. So. I mean, that turned into a band called Lord, and then I left that band, and this is, we're up to it about 2008 at this point. So, yeah, since then I've just kind of done my own music, which, you know, the ones I just mentioned, so. What about you? You also mentioned that you have those previous bands and people love to dig into other projects like ventures, like you did that, and so give us a little bit love. To be perfectly honest with you, I have too many to mention. Um, I'd like to start with the most important ones, at least. Well. The there's, ones that we should know. There's quite a few that I've played in that um, I've gone uncredited for and those I'll probably just leave that way. But I guess most notably uh, Temple Nightside was an important band for me because it was the first time that I completely changed tuning, changed style, genre, all that sort of stuff. And it was very important for me as a musician because I got to try a, a completely new style of music and play with guys who have a completely different take on music as well, which I took as great experience because I've, I guess I've collected little things from all these places and applied it to my own songwriting, which has been great. It's been a, like a very beneficial experience. So um, I think it's always good for any musician or artist or anyone who's got a creative mind to, to broaden their reach and see what they can learn and like, then... Like go beyond the comfort zone of your yeah. given genres, your favorite ones and all that stuff. Definitely. And I also think on that note that you said that, that 
Austere was a band that inadvertently had taken chances with the type of music that we played. I mean, we introduced keyboards and clean vocals and better song production and, and recording and all that, whereas all the bands within this, this genre that apparently we're linked to weren't doing Apparently that. we're linked to. Yeah, I know what you mean, yeah. Let's be honest here, a lot of the stuff that was happening at that time sounded shit and we decided to use a professional studio and yep. try and make it sound be better. And I just think it's good to not be afraid to try new things and, and just see where it goes. You know? Yeah, sometimes the mistakes give you way better lessons than those Definitely. That are successful. Definitely. I mean, um, what, what's to lose? You've got everything to gain from, from anything you try. It's kind of a healthy approach. Yeah. Now, talking about your live performance, I was taking notice, like, while it sounds like, like mentioned, melodic, atmospheric, black metal, and it's very, very much so, but you kind of uh, stand out from the, a lot of those bands that you don't have corpse veins, you don't have, uh, I don't know, ropes or spikes or nails and all that, which are especially very kind of Australian thing to like, oh fuck, like, I, you know, kick down the fucking speakers and amplifiers and all that shit that, like, kind of the violent mode, which, and again, it wouldn't really suit you, but, but you look more like, how to say, not meaning in a, in a bad way, but more like normal guys. Well, lots of tattoos, obviously, and shit, but, but you know, like, very different than a lot of other bands here. How intentional that is, or is it just like your thing? I, I've just got nothing to hide. I just, here's my music, here's me. If you like it, great. If you don't, then then great. Like, I mean, there's, there's just, I'm doing it for me at the end of the day. And if other people enjoy it, great. It's just... One other thing I paid attention to as I was like even figuring out, like, am I losing my eyesight or are you actually having this German Finnish musician, a friend of mine on stage and like, yeah, what's the story with this? Um, for last year, uh, it's, it's always just been Tim and I and mm. we've, we've never really had the opportunity or like we never really needed to have anybody else involved. So in terms of having a full lineup for a, for a gig, I mean, as Tim mentioned before, it's our third gig. So we're still testing the waters, how things are going. And we're very fortunate to have a lot of European friends from various contacts. And it just makes sense for us to, to ask for help for these people to get through a gig, as opposed to bringing four people over from Australia, which costs thousands of dollars. Yeah. Um, and share the experience with local friends and, and show us around when we're in Europe. And yeah, it's, it's quite good. I mean, again, sharing the stage or sharing a rehearsal room with other people is always beneficial. That's, that's also a pretty healthy yeah. approach. Of, are, are you are you healthy bad? <laughs> I suppose Healthy so. bad in a toxic world. I suppose <laughs> so, yeah. Now, one artist upon a time mentioned me that many of them many of the good bands are actually two-man bands. I mean, whether we're talking about bands like Dark Throne or Carpathian Forest and things like that, a lot of them are duos yeah. in essence. You could name like early, well, Midpoint Immortal anyway, and stuff like that. Go, go on with the list. Is this why, why your music is so good that you're just like two main guys? Yeah, look, I think um, and I don't want to offend anyone here, but I really find myself, I almost never like songs that are written by bands. Yep. I like, like, <laughs> Matt's laughing, but I like um, songs, I think a song should be written by like one or two people. Yep. Because if you ha involve too many people, it sort of loses. The vision, the vision gets clouded, like yep. too many cooks spoil the broth, whatever I, that I, saying I is. Saying, like, agree. Yeah. So I think, you know, getting, like you mentioned, all those black metal bands, and then you take like Lennon and McCartney or Benny and Bjorn from ABBA. These are like the greatest songwriters of all time and they're duos. So I just think there's something about two people who work together well and who know each other, you know, not just in music, but outside of music. It can really, I think, look, if I think if we brought a third person into Ostia, it would completely ruin the dynamic of how we create music, like. So now you're giving me a perfect shot to ask this question. So rather than having a menage to toi, you're basically having a relationship with two people. Yeah, we're a monogamous couple, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's what I was after. 
okay. think I think it would be fair to say in Tim and I have known each other for 25, maybe more years. We went to school together when we were young kids and we're very fortunate to be in a position where I know what a great drummer and songwriter Tim is and I don't need to say to him, hey, you should change this idea or you should do this. And he, I don't get any of that back in return. We just seem to work together quite well. And I don't think it's worth the risk of bringing somebody in that could potentially rock the boat. Yep. I, think, I think it's good to just leave it as it is. I mean, I can bring riffs to Tim and he'll go, that's great, or maybe you should try this. And I will happily try his idea. And we might end up with something great, or we might just go, oh, let's try something else. And nobody gets upset. But so. you surely must have some bumps along the road. Not really. No yeah. drama. No, never You're really. boring. Okay, let's say yeah. it. <laughs> Interview no, over. <laughs> it's, it's, it's good, it's good. Now, you mentioned some of the bands which are not exactly known for metal. So what inspires you? Which kind of music, which kind of artists are something that you want to give credit to for helping you shape out your own sound and style? Oh, look, when I was growing up, I was, from a really young age I was right into metal and I got into black metal really young through like oh, Dissection, Burzum, um, Emperor, you know all the classics. Yep, yep. Um, but then as sort of as time went on I, I branched out my musical taste. I always loved like I mean Oasis is one of my favourite bands. Oasis? Yeah. Really? Okay. Exactly yeah. That's um, surprising. Even, even, you know, even when I was a teenager and I'd dress in, you know, black jeans and boots and, and all the rest of it, I still surfed, I still listened to pop music and, yep. and, and stuff. So I've always kind of had a, a, a real kind of broad palette of stuff that I listen to. But, um, I mean, I've just found, while I may have influences from, you know, everything from Jean-Michel Jarre to, to the Pet Shop Boys to Dark Throne, like, it just seems, when I do music, it just seems kind of pretty natural to do black metal. It's just, I don't know why, don't ask me, but it's just how I, I things... Th I think I know what you yeah. mean. What, what about you? I'm a little bit different. I'm, I'm more or less in the black death metal world, pretty much exclusively. I mean, I, will, I have an open mind. I'll listen to things that people may suggest or whatnot. But for the most part, it's 90s black metal for me. Um, and I will say, in terms of my, what inspires me to play, and this may sound extremely arrogant, but it's myself. I, um, I've taken great sort of, I wouldn't say pride, but a long effort in coming up with my own style of playing and writing songs. But if there was anybody who I would look back on and say that that was the person that made me start playing black metal, I would say Quarthon and Bathory. Well, that's a goddamn good choice. From from the, the satanic stuff to the Viking stuff, I like it all, the whole lot. Now I have to ask is because I'm a big Bathory fan, and I happen to like yeah. those eras as well. What's the best Bathory album? All of them, but Hammerheart. Hammer 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 but Hammerheart. It's Hammerheart. That's we're, the only we're right bonding, answer. We're bonding. <laughs> Hammerheart is the best. But, right. but honestly, um, the return is a close second, and that's what I mean by Bloodfire Death is second. Come on, what are no, you talking no, no. about? I mean, the reason I now, say now that. I'm with him as well. The reason I say that though is because I'm a big fan of the more satanic Black Thrash side yep. as well as the Viking side. So I have a firm foothold in both worlds because, as I mentioned, I play Black Death Metal yep. stuff as well as more epic sort of things, and that's where it comes from for me. So when can we expect Australian take on? Bathurst epic Viking, but not necessarily Viking, so obviously that would be kind of a do you, do you cultural mean from approach. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Not, not from us, but I mean, personally, I think I think a lot of our music is quite epic as it is anyway, yeah. just in, yeah, a, in a different way. You, you can hear it. Yeah. I just don't think it, I mean, I wouldn't say that, you know, you could play Twilight of the Gods next to our new album. Like it. it well, yeah, probably not, but. Yeah. But I think in different aspects they're both epic I just think I mean essentially music is in the eye of the beholder you know you might think it's epic and I might not so that's what I yeah, mean yeah that's sometimes epic is a kind of a hard word to describe music because it can mean so different things everybody kind of thinks yeah it's grandeur it's big and it's majestic but sometimes what one thinks this is majestic is actually just cheesy and like okay it's not 
that big or whatever. But that's what I meant before about placing us in a genre or pigeonholing us in a certain yeah. thing. Like to, to that person it might mean something, but to us it doesn't. So music is subjective. It's just what you feel at the time when you're writing it, creating it, listening to it, etc. It's It's different all the time. I don't think you can just say, like, I mean, listen to Samael, one of the greatest black death metal bands of all time, and then look where they went. You know, things, yeah, cha things change. Yeah, they quite big steps or corners, so to say. Definitely. Look, let's start steering towards the end and go a little bit further. What's the next big step or series going to take? Did you want to answer or? Well, I guess, yeah, after we play in uh, a throne fest in Belgium next weekend. So that's sort of the next thing we do. And then um, we got a couple more gigs towards the end of the year. But I guess the next big thing that people can will actually care about is um, we've, we've already finished another album, the follow up to Corrosion of Hearts. So that I guess it will come out in 2024 sometime. It's I think that one is Corrosion of Hearts to me is like the follow up to Taleo like Old Ashes. Like it, we approached it, you know, a similar way and everything, but uh, and just wanted to make it more mature. Whereas this album is kind of, uh, I guess, more representative of, of current us. It's it's like another step forward kind of thing. So we're keen to get that out. God knows when that'll happen, but yeah, 2024, I hope. So yeah, that's what's next. That's a little bit of a fortune telling. Now, this is my, one of my favorite questions. I'm gonna tell you, it's a good question, but if you could give up. Uh, kind of uh, advice to your younger self when you were like taking the first steps with all any any of your bands really not just also what would you give like your nowadays self like hey you need to know what exactly when you're like playing in a band just keep going just keep trying new things and just keep working on ideas and when you're inspired just act on it i mean i don't think there's any like you might write a thousand shit riffs and one of them will be great. And then that'll spawn something massive, you know. It'll keep you keep you moving forward and give you momentum. And So don't stop when you fail. Of course, yeah. What about you? I just tell myself to pick an instrument other than drums. Why so? Because it's shit. <laughs> actually, <laughs> drum pornographic, great stuff. <laughs> That's actually a good point because... Um, <laughs> Is it? <laughs> no, I, I just mean, like, I did, I've done a lot of solo project stuff over the years and I taught myself to play guitar, bass, drums, vocals, engineering, recording and in hindsight I would probably say pick one and get better at that as opposed to... As opposed to being chuck of all trades. Yeah. So that's, I guess I'm completely the opposite because I play a bunch of instruments and I play them all really badly. So <laughs> yeah, maybe I should have just stuck to one but... What's, what's your favourite bad instrument then? My favorite bad instrument, yeah. uh, I like playing synthesizers. Synthesizers? Yeah. All right. What about you? I enjoy playing drums, but I'm, I don't know, guitars is probably where I'm most comfortable. And your favorite bad instrument? Bad instrument? Fuck, I don't know. I, d I don't really enjoy playing bass, so just, just say bass. No one enjoys playing bass. Yeah. <laughs> Which is a very good uh, reason to kind of uh, wrap things up. Now, word to the wise, what do you say? What is your wisdom of today? Just don't worry about what people think and what they're doing. Just just do what you want to do and just get on with your life. And you? Yeah, uh, just do what you want. Don't worry about other people. And you know, we're all trying to get through this shit fight that is life. So don't fucking put too much shit on anything. Just get through it together. Sorry, that's not a very depressive black metal way to end, but there you go. This is this is very, very modest, humble way to wrap up things. This is Austin. Check out their great stuff and uh, hope you get to get some life as well. This is Steel Fest 2023. This is a round up. Some good gentlemen. So check out their music and uh, stay metal. Thank you, guys. Cool. Thank you, mate. Sorry if we... We're not what you expect. No, 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 no. The thing is, we're just exact what they expected. Because I don't expect people to be certain kinds. What, did you expect us to be maniacs or something?